I believe in Hashem. I trust in Hashem. There never is a moment when that I am alone and I'm on my own. I believe and I trust in Hashem because I understand that He's holding my hand and every step is perfectly planned. He's holding me tight so I'll be all right. I believe and I trust in Hashem. So we're now in the middle of a story of the Rebbe Maharash, the Chassid, the Shmuel Brin, came to the Rebbe Maharash because he was accused falsely that he was sneaking from the government and cheating them by not reporting all the mashke, the vodka, that was coming out of his factory. What really happened, as you remember in the first part of the story, two of his Goyesha workers found another way t- to get the mashka out from the container secretly, and they would sell the mashka on, and take the money for themselves. But they were blaming Reb Shmuel, saying that Reb Shmuel told them to do so. And the police believed the Goyim. Shmuel has to go before the judges and prove that he's innocent. And he has no idea how is he ever going to do so. That's why he came to the Rebbe Maharash. Because a tzaddik sees much more than what we see. Through the eyes of a tzaddik, things appear totally different from that what we see. So he came to ask advice and a bracha from the Rebbe Maharash. And that's where we're up to in the story. As he was describing to the Rebbe Maharash how serious the crime can be, and that he can chas v'shalem, end up in Siberia for the rest of his life. He suddenly burst out crying, and he said, Rebbe, I don't even know me'ayin yavai ezri, which means, from where is my help going to come? Yes, he had no clue. How can he get out of this? Because the judges are Rishayim. They hate the Yidden. And they wouldn't look for the truth. So he doesn't see how he's going to get out of it. That's why he said, May Ayin Yavayezi, where's my help going to come from? The Rebbe Maharash thought for a moment. And then he said to him, Yes, May Ayin Yavayezi. Your help will come. May Ayin, from Ayin, which means from nowhere. From nowhere that you will expect your help to come. It's going to come because it comes from Hashem. Now this is what you're going to do, Shmuel. When you go home, if you meet someone who's in trouble and he'll say to you, May Ayin Yavai Ezri. Yeah, the same three words you said. You know what you should do? Make sure you help him. Take care of his needs. Then Hashem will take care of your needs. Abshmuel Brin left the Rebbe's holy room full of encouragement and excitement. He knows that everything is going to be okay. As he came out, he got surrounded by many chassidim who have already heard about the terrible trial that hanging over Reb Shmuel's head, about the libel, the lie that they made up against him. And they all tried to calm him and bench him and give him brachas and wish him all the best that he should be able to come out of this trial 
without any harm at all. While he was speaking with his friends, he found out that Chaim der Geller, that means the red one, they used to call this person Chaim de Geller because he had a long red beard. Chaim de Geller was his good, good friend. And he heard that Chaim lost everything he owned in a fire. You see, Chaim had an inn and a guest house, which was situated right near the river Dvina, which is not far from Lubavitch. Over there, by that river, was a lot of activity going on, especially in the springtime, when they started to shift, send shiploads and rafts of logs of wood all the way to Riga, to the sawmill. So there was so much activity going on that the workers would come into his inn or into his guest house and they would order, order some food, some drinks. And he made a nice parnasa. He made a good living, which was enough to take care of his own large family. And he also took care <coughs> of his <coughs> son-in-law who lived with him. Everything was fine. But then a big fire struck and he lost everything. They were happy that they came out alive. Baruch Shem, no one got harmed. When Shmuel heard this, he forgot about his own problems. And right after davening, he set out to go find Chaim to give him a helping hand. When he came to Chaim, he saw Chaim sitting on one of the logs of the burnt down building. Chaim was so happy to see him. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Shmuel. I heard that you were arrested. And now I see you here, Baruch Hashem. Shmuel looks at him and sees what kind of situation it is. He sees how serious the loss is. And he wants to offer him a loan. But Chaim says, uh-uh, I'm not going to take any money from you. First of all, your business is closed down for now. You're up facing a ex very expensive trial. And who knows what's going to be with, with everything by you. You can't lend me money. And besides, I don't even know when I can pay you back. But, you, but I can tell you for sure. Don't worry. Hashem is good. Shmuel, don't worry about me. Hashem is going to get me back onto my feet. Doesn't David HaMelech say in Tehillim, May Ayin, Yavai, Ezri, where is my help going to come from? Ezri me'im Hashem, Oyse Shemayim Varetz. It's going to come from Hashem, the creator of heavens and earth. So don't worry, Shmuel. As soon as Shmuel heard the words coming from his mouth, may I in Yavai Ezri, he remembered, this is exactly what the Rebbe Marash said to him, that when you see someone in trouble who's going to say these three words, may I in Yavai Ezri, make sure you help him, and Hashem will help you. So he insisted that Chaim should take some mo the money from, from him. But Chaim said no. At, at the end, Chaim agreed, okay, I'll take part of it. But Shmuel didn't accept that. He knows that Rebbe said, take care of the person who says, may I know Vayezri. Take care doesn't mean halfway. It means all the way. So he insisted and insisted until Chaim agreed. Shmuel ran home quickly, all excited, 
didn't even grab a bite, something to eat. He took the money and came back straight to Chaim and gave him the whole money with tears of thanks in his eyes. He thanked Shmuel for helping him and he says, all I can do is give you a bracha that you should be safe and everything should turn out well. And Shmuel left him, all encouraged and happy. Weeks have passed, and it's time for the trial. Shmuel came to court, and he had to sit down on the accused bench, where he had to, they told him where to sit, and then the court case began. The prosecutor called the two witnesses, the two Gaisha workers, told them to stand up and testify what they saw. And they swore to the judge that when they saw the hole in the back of the container that was there already, that Shmuel made it, and Shmuel told them that they should just fill up the bottles because Shmuel does not want to pay all the taxes to the government, and he appointed them to do that hard work. And then the prosecutor made a fiery speech that because Shmuel used and took advantage of these poor workers, he deserves the biggest punishment. Then the judge turned to Shmuel and said, what do you have to say? I'll say it again and again. I'm innocent. I never told them anything. This they did on their own, and they want to blame me. One thing I can say, Hashem is my witness, and He knows that I'm totally innocent. Now it's the turn of the judge to speak up. Now, sometimes a judge works alone. He makes a decision. Sometimes the judge has what's called a group of people. It's called a jury. And they are not judges. They're just plain people. But he, they help sometimes to make the decision. So now the judge has to give instructions to the jury what, how they should handle this case. And then we'll decide. So the judge turns to the jury and says, what we need to find out now, of course, obviously, whom is to be believed? Should we believe the two workers who admit that they were part of the crime, that they were stealing, they're just blaming it on their boss? Or are we to believe Shmuel who says he's innocent. So this I'm going to leave to the jury to decide. But before the jury makes a decision, I would like to share a story which will help the jury make the decision. And the story goes like this. It got very quiet in the court. Shmuel was so engrossed in his thoughts and saying to Helen, and not worried, but full of betachen, that the Rebbe's words will work, that Hashem is going to help him. He didn't even pay much attention to the story, although with one ear, he was able to hear it. And this is what the judge began to say. There was once a young boy traveling home to his rich parents. His father was a nobleman, on the way, he had to switch trains from one to another. So he got off the train with his luggage. And while he was waiting for the next train, he stepped into the restaurant to buy something. When he came out, he was shocked. The luggage was gone. It was missing. Which means all of his clothing, 
his money, and even his ticket for the next train. What is he going to do? So he walked around the station, hanged around in the lobby, in the waiting room. At night, he had to sleep on a bench. And he was too embarrassed to ask anyone for money or for food. And he was starving. Two days went by. When suddenly, a train stops and out comes a young merchant, a businessman. One look at this boy's face told the merchant that the boy hasn't eaten for days. So he took the boy right away. He noticed this is not just a little kid. He noticed that this boy, the way he's dressed, he comes from a very special family. So he brought him into a first-class restaurant, the best restaurant, and told the boy to order the best possible meal. He says, and I will pay for it. While he was eating, he told the merchant his story. That he had to switch trains and he lost his luggage. The merchant then took him to the ticket booth and bought a ticket for him to go on to the next train. And he even gave him some extra spending money in his pocket and saw him off to the train. Right before the boy left, the boy said, please tell me your name and your address. So when I get home, my father will be able to send you the money that you laid out for me. But the merchant said, no, I'm not taking your money. I'm happy to do it. Have a safe trip home. What you could do for me, that when you are able to do someone else a favor, you can help another fellow, that will be my reward. And the boy left. When the judge finished telling the story, he says, now I want to tell everyone that young boy is none other than myself. And I want you to know that when the rabbi came into the courthouse today, I did not recognize him. But when he started to speak, I suddenly remember, wow, that I see, I recognize the kind eyes of that man. Ever since he treated me so nice when I was a boy, I couldn't forget his kind eyes. The kind looking eyes did not leave me. And for years I was looking for him. I wanted to pay him back. I wanted to say thank you. And when he came into court and he started to speak, I recognized him. That's him. That is the merchant who saved me. So now it's up to the jury to decide. I believe that a person who's ready to give away money to a total stranger without expecting to get it back, I believe he's not crazy about money. He's not someone who will cheat the government. But now I'm going to let the jury decide. It took only one or two minutes, and the entire jury stood up and said, Not guilty. Reb Shmuel is free. Reb Shmuel was so deeply in, deep in thought about the words of the Rebbe that he didn't even realize what they're saying. All he remembered was what the Rebbe said. <clears throat> when you help another year the need, Hashem will help you with your needs. And the lesson that we learn from this story, what is the greatest need of all the Yidden today? We want Mashiach now. <clears throat> We want the Geula. So let's do exactly what the Rebbe said. Take care of someone else's needs and Hashem will take care of ours. Make sure 
Every single day, you help another Yid. Take care of someone's needs. Even by just saying good morning to the person. Or giving a, doing a phone call to a friend who you didn't see for a while. Or learn an extra Pasuk with another boy who doesn't know the Pasuk well. Take care of someone else's needs. Hashem will take care of ours. And since this year is Hakel, let's use our opportunity, like the Rebbe said, every Hakel should have three parts. Taira, Tfila, and Sadaka. So we're going to say Taira, Tziva, Lanu, Maisha, Mirasha, Kilas, Yaakov. Tfila, we're going to beg for Mashiach. We want Mashiach now. And Tzedakah, everyone should put in a coin in Tzedakah. Zayit Gizam.